Shall we pray? My Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment again. You have granted us access to come before your throne of grace. We pray that we may be inspired through the Holy Spirit and the ministration of angels. Let them come around to keep whatever is not supposed to be around, that we may study very well and understand. Be with us, bless everyone, and bless us with the understanding in Jesus' name. A good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Is it a good morning? Is it still morning? It was evening and morning. So it is still morning. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. It was evening and morning, evening and morning. So it is still morning, and then it will get evening, and that is the day. So we are still in morning. And it is very, very wrong to greet someone at around 10 a.m. that good morning. It is not yet morning, it's still evening. But that is the world we are in. We have little time. Let us begin. We're going to talk about enmity. Yesterday we had a little introduction, so we are going to expand it more and more. I will start from eight testimonies. Page 307, paragraph 2. There is a study of history that is not to be condemned. Sacred history was one of the studies in the schools of the prophets. In the record of his dealings with the nations were traced the, the, the footsteps of Jehovah. So today we are to consider the dealings of God with the nations on the earth. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to consider the dealings of God with the nations. For what purpose? We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy, to study the workings of, the, of providence in the great reformatory movements. So there are some reformatory movements that are going on and things are changing, and we have to study these in order to know where we are going and to understand the progress of events in the marshalling of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy. So we are supposed to study how God is dealing with the, with the nations and how the, to see the progress of events that will marshal in the nations, which nations will marshal in the final conflict of the great controversy. So this we read the book, The Great Controversy, then we have to know how, the how God deals with the nations and how they are to get us to the final thing. So this is the reason why we are going to study this. But too often, the, the motive of those who study these many books is, to, is not such to obtain food for mind or for soul, it is an ambition to become acquainted with the philosophers and theologians, a desire to present Christianity to the people in a land terms and, and propositions. That is wrong. We are not here to read these books and get so familiar with the world and with dark things. We are supposed to see how God deals with these nations and how things will 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 conglomerate to the entire good controversy and how the things will end so this is why we have to know what is america doing what how will america march in this and how will things will these things come into uh into play for example as you're going to see you notice that there is today a way america and russia 
are pretending to be one against the other. And many people think, oh, Russia is on the good side and America, since we know it from purpose, they are different. Yet these two but, but, uh, bodies are together, but they're trying to play a game on the other side. So they play deception, right? Deception, the other side, such that you, you can be duped within this uh, bike, if you'd like, or if this vehicle as we move into the world. Now, we are going to go back deep into history and we look at these, the, the other side. I told you that's where I'm going to move, but as we shall be going like this. This is the god Marduk for the heathens, and he, he is was the son of Anu, and he has the mark of the sun on his hand, and he holds two double triadents in his hand and has a sword. And he, he is chasing the evil. So this is a, a symbol of evil, and he is the one that wields and rules the evil ones, and he has the mark of Anu, and he has a sword and the two triadents. Now, in Greek mythology, there are very many gods, so they can confuse you, but Satan is androgenic. He doesn't have the, the gender. So whether he comes as who, as who, as who, as who, whether Zias, whether uh, the god in, in Uganda or in Krishna, it doesn't matter. He's the same one, but just with different names and photographs, if you like. So Zias was known as the god of the heavens and Poseidon, the god of the sea. We looked at this one, we have Apatesas. We have Aries and Hades, the god of the underworld. And all of these subscribe to the one god they know who is Marduk that comes from the other side. And Anu, who was the father of Marduk, is depicted to be an angel who had wings. So if Anu was an angel that had wings and has a son and is called Marduk, it could have an image of someone who was just from heaven, because we know Lucifer was an angel. He was a cherub, isn't it? And according to the Bible, we know cherubs have two wings. The seraphims have six wings. So it's post it, 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 in this uh, pic picture, Anu must be Satan. And uh, he, all of them have the sun symbol as their chief symbol of their god. So Anu had that sun. Do you remember this one? Do you remember that? Are you following me? If you look here, Anu has the sun. And if you see here, again, the sun continues as a symbol of the subservience of all the children of evil unto the god they serve. And if you see here, they show Anu, uh, uh, Marduk, and he receives a, sign, a symbol of the sun from, from Anu, this is Marduk, and receives the symbol of the sun. And the worshippers, by, by worshipping the sun, they pay obeisance to, to a king and to his father, Anu. So if you bow down to the system of the sun symbol, then you are showing obedience or subservience to the God, Anu. So again, you will find her as the same symbol, the queen of the night, who is Ishtar. Ishtar was the queen of the night, of the dark, and she, she, she was worshipped, and she puts on a triple crown. And today there is someone who puts on exactly that crown and it is a church which has a triple crown. Therefore, you can see a woman with a crown and she, uh, she also has a star. So even if Satan comes as a woman or as a man, it doesn't matter because male and female is for only humans. Isn't it? Hello? Are we there? 
it doesn't matter. So even if you worship her as Mary, you worship him as Mary or as a Buddha or as whatever, it doesn't matter as long as they worship. Because for him, he's not male or female. We don't have male or female angels except in Catholicism. So this go all the way. By the way, Easter, as if you go into the book out, Easter was the transliteration, was trans, uh, transliterated into Mary. But again, Easter, they had a feast which they call the Feast of Easter, which they celebrated for her coming out of the egg, which was always at the beginning, uh, the, end, the, the end of March to the beginning of April. Between that period is when they celebrated her coming out of the egg because she was immaculate. She was never born, according to them. She came from an egg. And the Feast of Easter was called the Feast of Easter. That's why Easter is always about buns and eggs and, and rabbits and all these things. But let us not go there now. Let's first concentrate here. So again, the star was seen to bring out the light, the sun, and you can have as well the crescent moon. We shall look at this as we go along. So the crescent moon was the female and the sun was the male. So this is the male-female aspect of it. And the priests, always of the sun, had a fish mitre on their head. So the, the mouth of a fish should be on the head for this priest or of the sun god, if you like it that way. So everywhere you can go in the history, always there's that god and has a star as a symbol of the subservience of every one. So if you have this symbol, the sun, if you either worship the sun, or you worship on the door of the sun, or if you do anything of the sun, you are paying subservience to that God. So it is a, a symbol of the obedience. So this is the Hammurabi, the, the king uh, of the, 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 the column, the king of Babylon. The code of Amrabi is a well-preserved Babylonian law code of ancient Mesopotamia dating back to 1754 BC. So they, they had rules, very many rules today. For example, they said the code consists of 282 laws with scaled punishments, adjusting an eye for an eye, a tooth for tooth. Excuse me, whose laws are those? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now listen carefully. God gave his ten commandments and people rejected them. What did he do? He said, okay, you don't want my law. Fine, you go and test the laws of the other nations. Which laws are those? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That is not God's way. But if you have rejected mine, fine, you go and test the other one. If you refuse my rule, then let me hand you over to the Babylonians, to the children of evil. Then you will see the difference between my rule and their rule. So every time we reject God's things, say, okay, fine, test the one of the other man. And then you see the difference. So they had uh, is, uh, one as graded depending on social status of slaves versus free man. Don't you have these laws today? Are you with me? Nearly one half of the code deals with matters of contract establishing, for example, the wages to be paid to an ox driver or a surgeon. Other provisions say the terms of transaction establish, establishing the liability of a builder for a house that collapses. Don't you have insurance? Uh, property that's damaged while left in the care of another. All these rules were developed by these people. And if you want to understand this, let us go and see. Then there were, mar there, there were also laws concerning inheritance, divorce, paternity, and sexual behavior. So the children of evil have rules that govern 
the way they do things. And God has his simple rules. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Full stop. The consequences, if you break the law, then there were issues. You could run to a city somewhere and come back and prepare yourself. But these ones, they, they arrest you. So, and here it signs the, the law, Anu and Bel called by my name, me, Hamrabi. So Anu and Bel called by my name, me. So this is one in one deity, but it's called different names. The exalted priest who feared God to bring about the rule of the righteousness in the land to destroy the wicked and the evildoers. Now this can perturb men and say, excuse me, he feared God, yet they are evil ones. How do they fear God? We are going to see their perspective of what they call fearing God. So that I should rule over the black-headed people, not like Okero, of course. Not black-headed uh, as such, but the, 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 the dark-minded, are you getting? Those who have the mind of darkness in their heads, heady people like Shamash and enlighten the land for further well-being of mankind. Now we're going to understand this in, in, in depth. Genesis chapter 6 tells us, the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now let me ask, if you, if, if you go to a place where everyone is corrupt, how would you bring uh, peace and harmony in that area? Would you get someone who is peaceful and bring him? No. What you do, you bring the the most notorious among them and you tell him, rule the rest. Then he will know how to handle all of them and he will calm all of them down. So usually, this, the most stiff-necked one is given the authority over the others then you can control them. Just go into the military government and see. Always the top one is the most dangerous one because he knows how to handle the ones below. Do you get the point? Are you getting the point? So you get the most experienced thief. The most experienced thief. And you, you give him to rule, uh, to, to be the one in the police, in order to catch all the thieves. He will get all of them. Because he knows the tactics and where they pass. But me, who doesn't know, how can they make me uh, head of police? I don't know even where they pass. So there is no way I can get the thieves. So you have to get one who is super thief, then you can, you can help out. Now, if we go to Isaiah 14, uh, 13, we see a power that was in heaven and came, was cast into the earth. And when he came, he said he wanted to be, to sit upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. And the mountain there ranges you sometimes used figuratively, which is properly appointed a fixed time or season uh, congregation, specifically a festival conventional year. So he wanted to be to own all the activities that run uh, on the earth or even in heaven. He wanted to be in the north. He wanted to be top. He wanted to be the one that directs everything though he never made any. And there was war in heaven, and he was cast down. And there he comes and finds Adam and Eve, and worked on their minds. And Eve surrendered. And Adam, because he said, the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God. That's the first time you bring plural of God. Gods. Knowing good and evil. So, the, so 
he pro Ellen White tells us he promised them eternal life in disobedience. They were promised eternal life in disobedience. And the Bible tells us they were chased out of Eden. By the way, this is, this is fascinating. Did you know they were forgiven by, by chest? Hello? Did you know that they were forgiven by chest? Yes, we have uh, forgiven you. Even uh, Let me even slaughter a lamb and then dress you, but get out. Is there one saved ever saved? No, there's nothing like that. It in itself tells you they were forgiven, yes, justified, but get out. Only the sanctified need to be here. You, you, are, you, you are not yet okay. Get out. They are forgiven, but go. And come back later. And they were preached a gospel sermon. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That was a gospel sermon. In fact, the entire Genesis from verse 15 up to 18, these are all promises to man. Many people take them as curses. But if you read between the lines, you notice that everything was a promise of hope for Adam. As we saw one of the ministers showing us. It was, these were all messages of hope for man, never a curse. In fact, if you go to, to Genesis, like, uh, like verse 16, when they talked to the woman, everything they told the woman was a promise of hope. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow mm -hmm. and thy conception too. Sorrow, conception, up. What's the difference between conception and bearing? It's not our language. Conception is the ability to, for, for, to, to, to bring a child into the womb. But bearing is taking him out. So I will greatly multiply thy conception and thy sorrow. So there are two things God is going to increase. You will conceive a lot, but I'll increase sorrow. What's the, di what's the difference between sorrow and pain? Hello, someone. What's the difference between sorrow and pain? Yes? When we look at who was technically and also, period of suffering or sorrow is something that follows you all the time. In this world, that it will be sorrow. But be of good child for become the world. It doesn't talk about pain. So this new translation is translated in pain. No, it's sorrow. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. In other words, you are going to bring to bear children, bring them into a world which is full of sorrow that you may understand what it means to disobey God. Typologically, how many children are born in the church? How many do we bring and bear them? But they are chased out of their homes and you have nowhere even to put them. You go and preach to someone, the, the wife accepts Jesus, the husband doesn't, and the wife is just out of the home if he remains a Christian or an Adventist. So what do you do? What can the church do? Tell her, get out, get out from your husband. Who will feed her? Who will take care of her? This is the sorrow. We just tell her, excuse me, try to, to find a way of going back. And please go and fight your own battles with God. Because there's nothing we can do. That's the sorrow. There's no way we can help. So 
God was trying to show us what it means to bear children in disobedience that we may know that we need him in order for, to find some hope in this world. And the husband, the, thy, what? You go and read, that thy desire shall be of thy husband. In other words, let all your desire be to thy husband. And, that, and if you take it typologically, it will show you that he is the desire of all ages. So the church is supposed to desire Christ alone, not anything else. Leave the buildings, leave everything, desire Christ alone, and then you'll be fine. Don't, don't wake up with your filthy dreams and you want Christ to fulfill them. No, desire him and he will direct you what you need. Honor him. And he shall rule over you. He will rule, he will rule over us. When he rules, it's the best. Ladies, let me tell you something. This business, this foolishness, I don't know which word to use, of saying that men, are, when the men rule women, that is making women inferior. Let me teach you something. What they call a ruler, the head is a ruler, is that right? Hello? Is the head the ruler? Is the head the ruler? Now let me ask. Does the head sleep? <laughs> Most times the head says what? Awake. The eyes can go. Uh, but the head will remain functioning. At least it's, some parts can be left to rest. The head is operating. It keeps working. That's why if you want to be a ruler, then you get ready not to sleep. You can find a man coming back at home. He's sleeping but has 30 problems on his head. But he sleeps, comes back home. You don't even notice there's anything wrong. But he has a way he will maneuver through them. Do you want to be that? God has decided, let the man bear for you all this. For him, I've given him the capacity. You can manage all of them. And for you, you want to be equal. You cannot manage. You don't have that head. He is the head. He will bear all this. And you, for you, you will just be walking over. You just sleep, they bring this. You sleep, they bring this. You sleep, they bring this. But if he's want to be the ruler, he will sleep and he will do the rest. What does it end up? And that is why many women are working and striving. And, and, uh, uh, by 10, 10 30, they are they're already working. They are in camp. You find them. Why? Because they wanted to be heads. They want to be heads. It was a promise. Don't look at these things as the world depicts them. Read the Bible and, and with, with, with spiritual prophets, and you see that this was a promise of hope. James chapter 4 verse 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses. In my, in my local language, this one was very, very badly translated. In fact, if you read it in Luganda, it is the worst translation I've ever had. It says, You adulterous women. Only. In Luganda. Mwabakaza means. There is no adulterers, adulterers, and adulteresses. They only put one, the female. Know ye not that the, the friendship of the world is enmity with what? So if we love the world, what does that mean? Of automatically, an enmity towards God is developed. Are you with me? Hello? It's developed. So the moment you like, you like, you turn to God, what happens? An enmity to the world. Have you gotten it? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay, so how much of the world do we need to, to, to love? Zero. Zero. Because once you, even one, is enough because one percent enemy with God is very big, Satan can use it. So they went out, and the book, Signs of the Times, 
uh, December 23rd, 1886, tells us, this was the first gospel sermon ever preached to the fallen man. This promise was the star of hope, illuminating the dark and dismal future of the race. Adam gladly received the welcome, assurance of deliverance, and lightly and diligently instructed his children in the way of the Lord. So after receiving the promise, he instructed his children in the way of the Lord. The minister was there telling us, please, the children, the children. And I was there seated and I said, oh my God, I have my, my two guns. What if today God tells me it is your last day? Will I ever see my daughters again in heaven? Will they, be, will they be in heaven? Have I done my part enough that even if I live now, all they live, we shall, we shall meet one another in heaven? Parents, think about that. As you play games, as you, as you, you look for the money, think about it. If you die now, or the child dies now, are you sure you will meet that child? That child will be in heaven. Think about it. It's very important. This promise was presented in close connection with the altar of sacrificial offerings. So what did, did, did Adam know the sacrifice system? Did he instruct his children about it? Okay. So how many children of, of ours know exactly the sacrificial system and how they're supposed to repent every time they sin before God? Have we taught them what it means when you do wrong, when you sin, what it means to, to, to be forgiven? And how to find forgiveness? How have, have we taught them? Uh, the altar and the promise stand side by side, and one casts clear beams of light upon the other, showing that the justice of an offended God could be appeased only by the death of his beloved son. Cain and Abel knew a hundred percent that they knew it. What did they do? In the class, in the case of Cain and Abel, we have a type of two classes that will exist in the world till the close of time. And this type is work of close study. So there are two classes. And they will exist till when? Close of time. There is a marked difference in the characters of these two brothers. Their brothers are in the church. And the same difference is seen in the human family where? Today. Cain represents those who carry out the principles of, and works of Satan by worshiping God in a way of their own choosing. So they will know that we are supposed to keep the Sabbath and they're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath, but they will come and they will cook on the Sabbath and they want to go to accept them by force. They will be told that please come on the Sabbath you shall not do any, any work of yours. You will not do anything. Don't even do fundraising. And they will put the fundraising there on Sabbath. They will worship God according to their own choosing. We know you want a day of rest. We know it very well. But we shall give you another one on Sabbath. We know very well you want, uh, you want to be loved. And you want to you want us to, to be in health. We know it. We, we know you gave us to eat this and this and that in Genesis, but we, for us, we have chosen the one of Leviticus 11. At least to let us eat the, the clean, but not all flesh. This cutting. No, no, no. We shall not. So there is this mindset that we know what is right, but we shall do it according to our own choosing. Like the leader whom they follow, they are willing to render how much? Did you know the Cain mindset is not the one that does not give God obedience? No. The Cain mindset is one which gives God 
partial obedience. Not the one who, who doesn't give God at all. No, partial obedience. But not entire submission to God. Man in the pride of his heart would like to believe that he can confer some favor upon God. That our Heavenly Father may not be the, the receiver. Our Heavenly Father may be the receiver and not always the giver. So how many times do you think you are, you are helping God and you are giving something to God and God should receive it? Sometimes you, you sit and for praying and they say, please God, accept it. Accept it. Will you force him to accept it? Do what is right? Mm. Automatically will accept it. He doesn't need to force him to accept it. Don't. He will automatically accept it if you do what is right. Man has nothing to give that he has not received from God. The Ken class of worshippers includes by far the smallest number. Hello? Are you, are you following? The largest what? Okay. Is this in harmony with what Jesus said? The path that leads to hell is what? To destruction is, big, is wide. And how many? So the, always the largest group is the wrong one. Even in Israel, the, the, the minister was teaching here and I went and I checked and I noticed there were 10 tribes. When the, when the Joshua, uh, the 10 spies were sent, the 12 spies were sent, two came with the right report. 10 came with the wrong one. Two only the right one. 10 the wrong one. If we are living in the times of democracy, what, what should we go with? The 10. That's why for me, I don't support these things of democracy in the church. How many are saying that we should go with it? And, 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 you, will, and you will notice that the, the biggest percentage is always the wrong one. Yes. And it is always good to ask, how many do not support it? When they raise up their hand, they should be given a chance to explain. They could be the only correct one. Did you know that? <laughs> That's why it is not right to use democracy in church. It should be truth, not democracy. So, the largest number, again, in the time of Jeroboam, as we were told, the Israel was split into two. Ten tribes called themselves Israel. Excuse me, they called themselves who? But originally, what were they called? Who were they? No, no, no. They were called children of Israel. They were not Israelites. No. Because Israel, Israel means one who fought with God and triumphed. So, did they triumph? It is only Jacob and was named Israel. So, they were children of the one who fought and triumphed. But when, they, when these ten tribes chose, they called themselves, we are the ones who triumph. Did they deserve the name? Hosea chapter 11, verse, verse 12 tells us that is that one who has, who, has the, who has the verse? Hosea chapter 11, verse 12 tells us that Ephraim encompasses me with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. So we have Israel and we have Judah. Ten tribes, Israel. Two tribes, Judah. According to Hosea 11, 12, who is right? Read. Read. Uh -huh. With lies. Mm -hmm. House of Israel. Mm -hmm. Deceit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see? So who are the right ones? The two. 
Always you notice that among the many, only the, 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 the group which is right will always be small. You can go throughout the entire Bible. It's a fact. For every false religion that has ever been invented has been based on the Cain principle. That man can depend upon his own merits and righteousness for salvation. Okay, now having gone through that, let's just look at. I'm going to go through this. We went through this, but just very fast. Cain was told to bring the sacrifice. I never brought the one they told him. What happened? Cain was wroth and his continence fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy continence fallen? Question Among the two, who was wroth? The one who did what was right and the one who did what, one, what was wrong. Who became, who was wroth? Excuse me. The one who did what was wrong, isn't it? Question If you see today a lot of wrath or wrath among among many ministers and members of the church. What, what comes to your mind always? Because guilt produces anger. But always, the right ones would like to help. Please, let's, let's just study and see we, if it's correct. No, you will not. And we shall just shall we. Stop. Hey, man, what is wrong with this man? Why is he so wrath? Why is he so wrath? Why? Because guilt produces anger. And this is what happened. And he was told, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And sit and step with this. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. So who is to rule? No, we are in Cain. We are in Cain. Cain, sin is at the door knocking. If you allow him in, he will come into you and you shall rule over him. Mm -hmm. huh? So Cain, if he allows sin to come into him, Cain will become the ruler of evil. If he allows evil to come into him, he will become the ruler of evil. So the devil would come into him and Cain will become the devil himself. If he allows. And he will be the ruler of evil. And Cain talked with his brother Abel and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and what? Did evil enter him? Does he rule it now? Yes. He could not even listen to his brother as he cried and cried. He is now the ruler of evil. Huh? And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Does he know who, who is he is talking to? Hello? Does he even know? Very well, but how does he answer him? What does that tell you? What is in his heart? He is now Satan himself who can answer God anyhow. He doesn't care or about whom he's talking to. And he says, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crept unto me from the ground. I like this text. It, then, you know, it does not say the voice of thy brother's blood cries, cries unto me from heaven. She, when Abel died, he was in the ground. He was not in heaven. And now art thou cast from the earth. By the way, the word cast is a symbol of close of probation. Every time you see cast, art thou cast, cast. That someone who is cast cannot repent. His probation is closed. 
So if you are cursed, there is no way. You are sealed in iniquity. Cursed. Which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So Cain is now the rule of evil. Cursed. Sealed. He cannot repent. The level where he is, he cannot. No matter whatever he does. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Is there any sorrow for what he did? Hello? Is there any sorrow for what he did? Where is the sorrow, the punishment? So it is the punishment that he doesn't want, but not feeling sorrow for what he has done. If you were, if you had, if you had a cane and you wanted to spin your child, and you beat two canes and said, "Daddy, you, you have ever beaten me beyond what I've done?" How do you look at this kid? Instead of saying, "I'm sorry, Daddy," I'm sorry. He said, "Ah, Daddy, those are enough. The punishment is enough." <laughs> Surely. This child, you just raise up your hands. This is what Cain did. He doesn't feel sorry of what he has done, but it is the punishment that is the issue. Haven't you heard these people, these new programs, where people are saying, why me, Lord? Why me to suffer all of this? Why is it that it is me going through this? Why not you? Have you been righteous? If the wages of sin is death and you are not dead, then God has been so gracious to you. But you are crying. Why me? Why not you? There is a program in, in I think those who come from Uganda, they know that program. Why <laughs> me? Every time I think about that thing, I say, eh. so it is God who is inflicting them more than what they deserve. So God has given them more, more pain than what they deserve. Why me? And the authors of such a program have only to have come from a serious, serious son of Cain. Because you cannot develop such a, an idea. There is no sorrow. They just, they're just showing on radio how people have suffered so much. And God has been turning his eyes and ears from them. So God is malaligned and is the problem. They are the correct ones. I don't listen to such nonsense. So, then God said, fine, if that is your thinking, then, and the Lord said unto the him, therefore, whosoever saith Cain, Vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So you have to read English in English. It doesn't mean that, that he put a mark on him that when he's walking, people say, mm, that is Cain, don't kill him. As he walks, he says, hey, that, that is Cain, don't kill him. No, 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 no. It means Cain has the ability to think seven times faster of how to kill you than you can kill him. Because that's what it means. He is so skilled in the art of killing and the art of deception that you cannot beat him. If you, you, you think of killing him with a spear, right now he has a nuclear weapon. Yes, there, there, is, a, there, is, a, there is a general who made, it, who made a statement in Uganda here, is a general said, uh, I, I, I advise Jesus not to come back. Because by the time he was here, they had spears and arrows, but now we have nuclear. So we shall blow him before he comes here. What do you think of such a mindset? Do you know what comes to me? It is a cry for help. I'm bad love. 
please, please, is there anyone, is there anyone who can help me? It's a cry for help. I wish I could get to the general and speak to him, even if, he's, even if he slays me to death, but at least that soul. It is crying for help. But when, when, when we send our ministers there, they just praise them instead of telling them the truth. So that's why the king, the son, the descendant of this mindset, Nebuchadnezzar had to make the furnace seven times hotter. Okay. And now, since they never bowed before the image, do we expect this to be repeated? I'm sorry. Yes, they will make things seven times hotter. That is why they are also going to face the seven plagues. Because I always wonder what seven times water. Okay, you wait also for the seven plagues water. And for us, the good thing the seven plagues are poured after the close of probation. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried about that. What I worry about is one close of probation. Once it is closed, sealed, which side you are, anything. So what is the mark here? The mark. The Hebrew word for the mark which they put is oath. Probably it means a signal, a flag, beacon, monument, omen, prodigy, evidence, a distinguishing mark, a miracle, sign, token. And if you go to uh, Exodus chapter 31, verse 13, Exodus 31, 13, God says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign, and the Hebrew word there is still oath. The same one for mark, oath. That means that if the Sabbath is the mark of God, it is the oath of God, it is the sign of God, then Cain must have received the same sign, but on the other side. So it, if the Sabbath is a symbol of obedience, to God, then Cain must have received a mark of still of obedience to him. And that could not, not be anything else but the sun. That's why Anu has a what? Hello, have you been there? Don't you remember this, the sun? Have you, have you seen that they all had the mark? Hello? Now we are, we are trying to connect from there to the one. Now we are. Yeah, now we are connecting back. And Cain knew his wife, and she, she conceived and bare Enoch, and built the city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now I want you to be attentive here. Enoch is a son of Cain directly. There is another son, Enoch, a son of who? Through the line of Seth, who is the father of Lamech? Is, is it Lamech or Methuselah? Okay, we shall see. Then, and unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mehuyael. And Mehuyael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. Do you see the names are almost the same? Methuselah, Methusael. Uh, Mehuya, Mehuja, Mehuyael. The names, and he begat Lamech. So they also have a Lamech and an Enoch. And Lamech took two wives. The name of one of the wives, Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. So this was the first. Cup. This was the first time someone marries two wives from the children of disobedience. Now evil is increasing from one wife to two. And Lamech had two wives. And what did he say? Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zira, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech. For I have what? Slain a man. Is there another murder? Is there another murderer? Yes. To my wounding, and a younger man to my heart, 
If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. Seventy and sevenfold. Now, the old, uh, the old Bible says, if Cain shall be, during those years, shall be was one word. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy times sevenfold. That is why, if you go to mathematics, seventy and seven symbolically can mean seventy-seven. But seventy and usually means multiplication. So seventy and seven can mean seventy times seven. Are you there? Hello? So it can mean 70 times. So in Daniel 2, 2, 9, 24, the Jews were given 70 weeks, and this is 70 times 7. Then I put 70 and 7, no 77, no 790 is probation to the children of disobedience. So it was symbolic to, the, to, to, to close, to end the, the scene and all this. So probation for the Jews to, be, to, to come out of disobedience was 490. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 that, uh, sorry, chapter 19, how many times will I forgive? 19. And Jesus said 70 times 7. It does, does not mean 490, but it was meaning until the close of probation. Forgive him until his probationary time is closed. So don't, don't be the one to close someone's probation. Let continue forgiving until probation closes. So it's interesting that is this man who made, I don't know how it could still continue, he made 77 days of glory. I, you know, I like the way these guys deal with these things. I, he never chose 72 or 76 or 75, but he was exactly 77. And they have almost 13 episodes, 30 episodes now. And the books are very many. Uh, they, uh, 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 every time he, he, bought a, he brought out a book, I could get one from one of them then and read. And oh my God, the, the, about the Holy Spirit and how it, he, he really takes it. It is exactly the, the, the same thing that is being propagated today, even in the church. So... He is 77 days of glory, beginning June 28th, impartation and activation night. Whew. Have you heard that? Impartation, you are going to be imparted and activated. So you have been what? Inactive. So you're going to be now activated. And you're activated when? Hello? Night, night, deliverance and healing night, intercession night. Why not, not only night? I must do the will of him that said him. Why it is still? The night cometh when no man. So if they are working and no man should work, then they must be children of darkness to work. In the night. And the, the same things they do, you will find it, with, of course, in the Catholic books. This is uh, Father Mike Driscoll speaking about uh, deliverance, demons, deliverance, and discernment. Same thing, separation back from fiction about the spirit world. Same things as Catholicism propagates it, exactly these ones. This, these, are, these are the same guys, but trying to see. So they brought the Muslims and healed them. They, they brought the, the radio men and healed them. And he even held uh, prayers for the salvation of the state house officials, parliament officials, and all other government entities. I'm going to pray for you to be saved. I wonder which salvation he has in the night when they work in the night. And wow, he was joined with the military men. 
and he is friends of, 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 of the rulers of, of this world. And if you look, the party goes on and on, and the soldiers join in. And I, I love that specifically. I know I'm, I'm, I'm so skeptical when it comes to symbols. When someone does something, I always wonder. So he did this, and then the, the girl did that. So I, would, uh, I wouldn't skip looking at it. So I went round and round and found, why do these guys, because they're all cultists, then they must have something it means. So I went around and looked. Uh, it is the same as the yin yang or the black or white triangles. And this is the, this is the father of, uh, of communism, raising up his, his hand. And if you go and read, the Webster Dictionary will tell you, uh, V is a sign or picture. His picture did that, but never defined and explained. Such words as Vulcanism, Vulcanize, and Varga are defined. However, in close proximity, Vulcan is the ancient god of fire and destruction. Remember that? So if they said V means Vulcan, the god of destruction. So he tells him, you will get destroyed. And the girl says, yes. Anyway, uh, because for them, they know, of course, she's innocent. She doesn't. But, and very many, even among the Christians, you find them doing like this. And they do pictures doing like this. And, and they say, well, do, do they have a clue? What they're doing? But ignorance is a very big problem. Everywhere, the occultists use this. And during the very time, as he did this, Francis, uh, Pope, uh, Mario Bigolio, was let the church always be a place of mercy and hope. And he gave a year of mercy. In the very period, Pope Francis gave a year of mercy to the whole world. Please, come back home. It is one year of mercy. When it is, when, if it goes beyond and reaches 2017, he is going to close probation. And since he is the representative of Christ on earth, okay, you are finished. <laughs> but don't worry, he is closing his own probation, not ours, because ours is closed by God alone. Now, just for interest sake, please allow me. When I look, I looked at this symbol and it was, do you see this one? Do you see that? When I look at this symbol, it, is, it fascinates me that these are the fires that were used in the 1995 logo when they were translated, changing it from the Three Angels message to to the, now the new logo of the church. Is it possible that they knew exactly what they were doing and, and the, the movers know underground what they're doing? I will not go into that. I don't want to, to, to call so much fire. So the year of Marseille, it's already closed, sorry. The year of Marseille already closed. Those who never entered, sorry for the Pope. We, we never entered his year of mercy. So, now, I think I've, I've built enough ground. What time is it? How many minutes do I still have? Huh? Time runs so fast. Let me, let me do this one very fast and we go. Uh, Morals and Dogma is a, a book of, of the highest level. We shall come to this. The future, in, as we go along, is the highest level of Freemasonry. We shall look into this. Uh, it is given only to the high, to the thirty, to the thirty-third degree Freemasonry, which is the in the Scottish Rite, or or the thirteenth degree of the York Rite. As you enter into the shrine, the, it says this. Now let's see the Enoch. Enoch 
we are told, walked with God 300 years. After reaching the age of 65, walked with God and he was no more, for God had taken him. I want you to be very careful. Which Enoch can the children of evil talk about? How many Enochs did we see? Two. There was Enoch, the son of who? Cain, and, and Enoch that was born through the line of Seth. Isn't it? But here they say, his name signified in the Hebrew, initiate or initiator. The legend of the columns of granite and brass and bronze erected by him is probably symbolic. That of bronze which survived the flood, it survived the what? So the children of evil must have survived. Ha, they, they must have come in the in the ark with one of the children of, or the wives of Noah, or the wives of the sons, or whatever, because I was intermarried, isn't it? Isn't it? So, is su supposed to symbolize the mysteries of which Freemasonry is the legitimate successor. So, what can Freemasonry succeed? It must be the occult. So this cannot be the Enoch that walked with God. It must be the other Enoch. But they call him Enoch. So you have to be careful which Enoch they're talking about. It, it must be the son of Cain. From the earliest times, the custodian and depository, depository of the great philosophical and religious truth, unknown to the world at large. I thought we know about the the other side. How come this one is unknown? It must be the side of Cain. And handed down from age to age by an unbroken current of tradition. So still the book, the things of Enoch are through what? Tradition, not scripture. Embodied in symbols, emblems, and allegories. That has to be for the children of Cain. So if we go to the Cain side, we shall see Genesis 4. We have Cain, Enoch, Irad, Mehujael, Methuselah, and Lamech. Then we come here, we see Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mehalalel, Jared, Enoch. So Enoch is born 392 years later. But Enoch was born by Cain directly and builded him. That means, according to to the occult, Cain is Anu, and Enoch must be Marduk. Because Cain handed to his son power to rule as well over the children of disobedience. So this Enoch and this Enoch are very different. And that's why today we have a problem that has arisen in the world. Have you, have you heard of the book of Enoch? Huh? I think those who are in the prophetic world now you can sense. <laughs> yes, the book of Enoch has brought a lot of issues. And many say, this is the book. It, it shows us how things are. And even the, the Sabbath must have changed according to the book of Enoch. According, and the calendar. There is a very great, a big war. The book of Enoch has been now brought out, of course, by the Vatican, found in the Vatican Library. Uh, first book of Enoch, there are two books, first Enoch and second Enoch. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? First Enoch and second Enoch. The first book of Enoch is called Ethiopia, Ethiopic book of Enoch, a pseudographical work, and uh, whose only completed ex uh, extant version is one of the Ethiopian translation of a previous Greek translation made in Palestine from original Hebrew Aramaic, or Aramaic. Enoch, the seventh patriarch in the book of Genesis. Listen carefully. They always get the other Enoch and place him with another Enoch. So you have to be careful which Enoch they are using. 
was the subject of Abanda's apocryphal literature. I thought that I was not apocryphal. Uh, during the Hellenistic period of Judaism, and this one will tell you, Enoch is a compilation of several separate works, most of which are apocalyptic. It's oldest portion of the apocalypse of weeks, written shortly before the Maccabean uprising of 167 BC against the Seleucids. Other sections, especially those dealing with astronomical and cosmo cosmological speculations, are different to date. Because of its views of messianism, celibacy, and the fate of the souls after death, I mean, what is in there? Celibacy, uh huh. The fate of souls after what? Now, does the Bible teach that? So, what kind of book could this come from? It must come from the side of you know, from the side of Cain, side of Cain, not the side of God. And it was written during the BCE, is one of the most important non canonical apocryphal books. Works and probably had a huge influence on other Christians, particularly Gnostic beliefs. So these are Gnostic. Now I will explain the Gnostics as we go in the next lecture. The Gnostics are these who had light and darkness mingled together, and they worshipped both the both gods, Lucifer and 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 Jehovah together, in order to create a syncretism a syncretistic kind of worship, and this was founded by the Greeks, handed over to, to a man called Simon. Have, have, have you ever heard of Simon Megas? The, the, the man who wanted to buy the Holy Spirit, uh, the magician. That one wanted, he came to be baptized such that he can have the two powers. He has this one and this one. And and the book tells us that he became the sorcerer to Nero. And is the one who advised in, the, in, in Constantine in the formation of a Christian church in Rome. So that is exactly Simon Megas, and is the father of Gnostics, putting light and darkness together. He want, that's why he wanted to be baptized, so that he can have the spirit of God and the spirit of whatever, these two. Then men can come to him because they had lost a lot of followers when Philip and all the guys were preaching and baptizing and healing. So he had lost. Then he came and was baptized to make sure that now he can receive the power. But when he saw he was not receiving the power, he went back to Rome. But he was a sorcerer, a witch renowned in history. I think let's end at that today. We shall just continue from there because of time. But this book of Enoch, it is filled with hallucinatory visions of heaven and hell. How many of you would like that? Have you heard what I said? It is filled with what? Visions of what? Heaven and hell, angels and devils. And of introduced concepts such as fallen angels, the appearance of a Messiah, resurrection, the final judgment, and heavenly kingdom on earth. Heavenly kingdom on where? On earth. That has to be the other side. Inter interspersed with this material are quasi scientific discretions on calen calendrical systems, geography cosmology, astronomy, and meteorology. All of these are from the occult. So the book has been brought by Rome because Rome knows this is the right time to counteract the Sabbath and its authenticity and when the Sabbath should be and all this. Since we are coming to Sunday Sabbath issue, why, don't, why not introduce the book of Enoch? and astronomy, and then they, they would prove to you using astronomy and what, and geography and everything, and you would say, oh, the Sabbath change, it's no longer on Saturday. It's on another day. I had two friends who joined, who had joined these people, 
And they, they came and told me, Do you have you read the book of Enoch? I said, Yes, I know the book of Enoch. Don't you think the Sabbath changed? I just knew. Because once they talk about the book of Enoch, the next thing is the Sabbath changing over time. Then I asked them, do you know mathematics? Since you, it is now geographic, cosmology, uh, uh, astrology, and meteorology, I think let's get down to math. Seven is the number. The week cycle has never changed from all. It is still seven. Now, if you get seven and, and you multiply it by four, what do you get? 28, isn't it? Now, if you, have, if you want to make a month to have 30 days, what happens? Does that change the weekly cycle? No, it's just make 7, 7, 7, 2. Isn't it? 7, 7, 7, 2. 7, 7, 7, 1. So, so it, the 7 will continue, but it is upon you to decide how you... So the 7 cannot change. The Sabbath cannot change because the, the cycle of the 777 has never changed. From there to today. If it changes, then we should have 8 days in a week or 10 days in a week. But if a week is still in 7, then the Sabbath can't change. No matter how many uh, archaeological, astrological, uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the witchcraft they can perform, it can never change the Sabbath. For what it is. So please don't be deceived by those things. The, the Book of Enoch was brought by the Vatican in order to counteract the Sabbath because it's the period we are entering when the Sabbath will become an issue. And now, why don't we introduce doubts among the people about the Sabbath and its authenticity and when it starts? And the dates have changed. You see, some days were removed and then added, and then what? And the Sabbath must have, might have changed over time. No sense. When I read it, I, I, when you read the book of Enoch, they, it, you just find some rubbish history and a mixture of science, and that's why the Vatican kept it for so long to release it now, when it is time to fight the battle. Question. Those of you who now know the authenticity of the Bible, how much do you need to be very careful and, and keep the right Sabbath and the hours and everything? Because the other side, do you see what is coming? Hello? Do you see what is coming? They are ready to counteract and show many people are being removed from church just using the book of Enoch because they find those who are not grounded in the truth of the Sabbath and how to keep it right. May God help us to stand on the truth. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for you have enlightened our minds and you open our eyes every day in different ways. As we're going to study, may I pray for all the ministers to strengthen the truth in our hearts because the devil has also strengthened his sight. Let us not be wary when we see these things, but let us grow to know that we should now make you closer to us even beyond what we have ever done before. Help us as we continue to study. Inspire us more and more. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.